pay attention to your pain Reach out and find your comfort Take a walk and play some music Make the time to start the healing Let the healing begin Let the healing begin Look to the sky and breathe it in Look to the sky and breathe it in Feel the sunshine on your skin Feel the sunshine on your skin And let your life resume again And let your life resume again Pay attention to your pain Reach out and find your comfort Take a walk and play some music Make the time to start the healing Let the healing begin Let the healing Look to the sky and breathe it in Look to the sky and breathe it in Feel the sunshine on your skin Feel the sunshine on your skin And let your life resume again And let your life resume again Pay attention to your pain Reach out and find your comfort Take a walk and play some music Make the time to start the healing Let the healing begin Let the healing begin Look to the sky and breathe it in Look to the sky and breathe it in Feel the sunshine on your skin Feel the sunshine and let your life resume again And let your life resume again Stay spirit, thank you for the stay. The ceiling, the ceiling, the ceiling day. The ceiling, the ceiling, the ceiling day. Thank you for the stay spirit, thank you for the stay. Thank you for the stay spirit, thank you for the stay. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. My radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. My radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing. This healing, this healing day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. And I am just realizing I can't work the uh, spotlights anymore. So, but I'm here. <laughs> I, I think we can handle that over here. Yeah, we can, can you handle you. that, Michael? That'd be great. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, 
And it's wonderful to see all of you. I can see all of you, and that's what's most important. And I am so glad that you have joined us today for our live Zoom Sunday service. You know, we were talking before we started and noting that we gave our last live in-person service a year ago today. It's been one year that we've been meeting on Zoom, but how grateful we are that you have found us, that you've stayed with us, and that we've also uh, found more friends to uh, come join with us, including our guest speaker today, Lucian Baker. And uh, again, I'm just so glad that you are here. And I want you to know, as always, that I am keeping you in my prayers. And I do look forward to the time when we're able to meet safely again together where we can continue our connection and welcome new friends. And one thing to note uh, as we get started, and that is that as you're coming in, you are being put on mute. That is so you don't have to worry about your background noise. And as always, there is uh, there are two exceptions to that. One is when I ask for a volunteer to read the daily word. And if you would like to do that, you can either indicate that in the chat or just wave uh, to the web camera. And the other time is when we have our uh, prayer portion of our service. When you are invited to speak your prayers aloud, if you would like to, you're always welcome to put them in the chat. But if you'd like to, to speak them aloud, again, just indicate that to me by uh, waving your hand and we will, um, uh, we will unmute you. But for now, just take a deep breath wherever you are as we go within our inner sanctuary. We can't where we are always safe. Every time something goes wrong, guided and at peace. Just take this time to let go of any worries or concerns and connect virtually with all of us in this community and with the God of your understanding. <clears throat> Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we celebrate the truth that our God is love, as expressed in Unity's foundation statement, which you are invited to repeat with me at home. There is only one, one presence, presence and, and one power active as the universe, universe and as life. my life, God, God the, good, the good, omnipotent. Um, so take another deep breath now, become comfortable, and gently release any cares of the day. Because the only thing that you need to do in this hour is to open yourself up to the love and goodness of the divine as you relax into this sacred time and space at Unity Spiritual Center. For 75 years now, we are now in our 75th anniversary year. We at Unity Spiritual Center have celebrated and honored people of every culture, of every creed, of every religion, of every race, of every age, and every lifestyle. Knowing there are many paths to God, many faces of God, many names for God, but only one God. Seeing through eyes of oneness and acknowledging our oneness, we know that God indwells all people and is expressed through each of us in unique special and individual ways. Unity offers positive, practical, progressive spiritual teachings and tools that honor the universal truth in all religions and respects each individual's right to choose a spiritual path. And as we do every Sunday, I'm going to light the worship candle so that you have a visual aid so that you have a visual conception of what I just said. And all it requires is my match to work, which it is. 
So as you look at that, as you look at that flame, just know that that divine flame indwells you, that you are a spark of God, an individual, individualized expression of God, and that God works through the movements of your heart and your hands. Our opportunity here at Unity Spiritual Center and our vision is that you discover the power within you to create the life of your dreams, that you have peace of mind and deep happiness, that you enjoy joyous and loving relationships with yourself, with spirit, and with others, that you spend your days doing what you love and feel called to do, and most of all, that you know that your life matters, that you make a difference, and that the world is a better place because you're here. So let's pause now to hear a musical selection sung by our music director extraordinaire, Michael Hatfield. Mm -hmm. All thoughts, all prayers, and we are always praying. Our thoughts, our prayers. Listen to what you're saying. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of peacefulness and know that God is always there and every thought becomes a prayer our thoughts are prayers the tools that we create with our thoughts, our prayers. That spirit resonates with. Seek a higher consciousness, a state of mindfulness, and know that God is always there. Every thought becomes a prayer. Seek a higher consciousness state of mindfulness and know that God is always there and every thought becomes a Beautiful, Michael. And as always, if you are appreciating what you're hearing, um, do show Michael some love by using your reaction button or um, indicating applause in front of the webcam because we are really blessed by him every week. So now as we continue to get comfortable and relax even more deeply, into this time of prayer, worship, and meditation. Let us open our hearts to receive the message of today's daily word. And I am going to uh, take a look and see. Oh, I see a 
I see a volunteer in the form of Ruben. So Ruben, I am going to put you on spotlight and please read the daily word for us. Good morning. Energy. The energy of divine light renews me. How do I have the focus to achieve my goals? How do I have the strength to carry on through challenging times? How do I have the aptitude to learn, grow, and change when I've called upon to do new things? At the heart of everything I'm called to do is the energy to do it. I am a divine being and I call upon the power of God within me to channel my energy in deliberate ways. Divine energy is inexhaustible. Unlike my muscles, which can tire and my mind, which can be frazzled, the power of God within flows through me unimpeded. In prayer, I claim divine energy and imagine it flowing through me with the force of a mighty waterfall. I am grateful for my renewal. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Isaiah 40, 30, 31. Thank you so much, Ruben, for reading the daily word for us. Unity Spiritual Center is a center of prayer and healing. During this time of shelter in place, you are always invited to send us your prayer request by email, snail mail, or by leaving a message on our office answering machine. And uh, Jerry has just put that contact information in the chat for you. And let's just please take a moment now to hold all those prayer requests in our hearts and minds. Perhaps we don't know the names of the people or their particular prayer requests, but we know that we are holding the prayers of our community in our hearts. And let's know with and for them that no matter what is going on in their lives, divine love and divine order is present. But now is the time to speak or write your prayer requests here for your spiritual family so that we can support you and stand with you. So again, if you have a prayer request, uh, feel free to put it in the chat or um, wave, your, wave your hand in front of the webcam and I will call on you to speak it aloud. So I am putting us on gallery view at this point. As we begin by singing our prayer song, which Michael will lead us through. And again, we will answer each prayer request by singing, your prayer is our prayer too. We are connected by the heart. Where do you end? Where do I start? Whatever you feel, I feel too. You're a part of me. I'm a part of you. Your prayer is my prayer to your prayer is my prayer to so 
<clears throat> Valerie is requesting prayers for her friend Randa's parents, who both have COVID even after one vaccine. And I am no um, medical expert, but I am a follower of Dr. Fauci and did just hear him say that even after you're vaccinated, um, precautions still need to be taken. So I'm going to use this as a little uh, PSA uh, announcement reminder. But in the meantime, prayers for her friend Randa's parents who both have COVID now. Your prayer is my prayer. And Karen is asking for prayers for all who are suffering, may they live and breathe with ease. Your prayer is my prayer too. And Kathy is asking for prayers for Norma, Joan, and Shiva for continuing health and wellness. Your prayer is my prayer to I guess requesting prayer for Reverend Jeff Anderson uh, and his family he's with the um, uh, Oakland Center for Spiritual Living he's the senior minister there and he's in hospice and is expected to make his transition and uh, Lucian is also asking for prayers for Reverend Jeff and his family during this time your prayer is my prayer too. I'm going to take a look and see if there are any other prayer requests that want to be spoken out loud. If you have a prayer request, please uh, indicate that by I see Ruben. So Ruben, I'm going to put you back on spotlight again. Pray for my cousin Arturo who is ill. Your prayer is my prayer too. And Shira, you are welcome to speak your prayer request aloud. You want to unmute yourself? Great, thank you. Um, I would like to send a prayer out uh, for the health and wellness of everybody during this pandemic, um, especially for uh, my sister who is uh, suffers with a compromised immune system. Um, I just want to wish her and pray for her strength, her continued strength, and her continued uh, health and wellness. Your prayer is my prayer too. Joni is asking for prayers for Jessica's father, who will be getting surgery in April. Your prayer is my prayer too. Is there anyone else who has a prayer request they'd like support with? Just raise your hand or put it in the chat. You've been here before. We also have a time in our service where we make room for gratitudes for people to share their blessings, things that, things that they're thankful for. So if you have something that you'd like to share with your spiritual family so that we can celebrate with you, uh, this is the time to do it. Ruben and Josephine say that they're grateful to have Lucian here. And I think probably all of you would say the same, all of us would say the same thing. So yes, we are very happy to have Lucian here again. And Valerie is grateful for seeing her sister and her family this week. It's wonderful. Uh, Juanita, feel free to take yourself off mute. I'm blessed to have my granddaughter from Atlanta, Georgia here viewing with all of us for the first time. I am so blessed. Wonderful. Thank you. And 
Randy is grateful for her second vaccination last week. Wonderful. Uh, Karen, all the way from Switzerland, please unmute yourself. Um, I am grateful for my cousin's daughter, Sabrina, has gotten her dream job and will be moving to Berlin in May, um, something that she's been very excited about. And I'm so glad that this has worked out for her. I'm very grateful. Wonderful. Thank you. That's great news. And Tiana is grateful to be here with your grandma. And I wonder, Tiana, if you're talking about Lucian's grandma, <laughs> who, is a, who is a very well-respected minister herself. <gasps> Anything else? Anything else that you'd like to share? Uh, Reverend Ikea, go ahead and unmute yourself. So I'm grateful for two opportunities in March to read my poems. One is OzCat Radio on March 25th, and the other is today in connection with an art exhibit in Venetia. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. And we look forward to you sharing your poetry with us as well. Okay. <laughs> and I thought I saw one more hand. Yes, Lucian. I am, uh, of course, grateful for being here back home with family and just feeling all the love. And my best friend is also on the Zoom today. So I'm just overwhelmed with happiness right now. Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. Any other blessings, thanksgivings, gratitudes you'd like to give? Hi, Kia. <laughs> <laughs> I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. Thanks for this opportunity to bless and be blessed in spirit. And I think Wendy's um, acknowledgement of the outpouring of love and support in the human family for those who are in fear and suffering is a good gratitude to end this particular time of uh, prayer with. We've seen in this last year that we've been sheltering in place, we have just seen amazing acts of love and support, not only within our own community, but within the nation and our world. And we are grateful for that. We are grateful for seeing people living through the beautiful goodness of the higher angels of their nature, and we give thanks for the knowledge that when we ask, it will be given to us. When we seek, we will find. And when we knock, the door will be opened to us. We give thanks for the feelings of peace and comfort and connection that we are feeling right now, even through our Zoom um, platform. And we give thanks always for the privilege of praying for others, affirming that always and in all ways, no matter what the circumstances may be, divine love and divine order is everywhere present. And so it is. Thank you, God. in my garden I plant the seeds I trim the flowers I pull the weeds I share my harvest with 
everyone and they appreciate the work that I've done so if you ask me what my garden grows the answer's easy cause everybody knows it grows love it grows love it grows love I started planting the first moment I remember and God supplied all I need in early April to the last of September I watered each and every seed I watched the blossoms as they began blooming as the bees hummed out of tune the sun was shining as the fruit begin to ripen toward the end of June so I tend my garden I plant the seeds I trim the flowers I pull the weeds I share my harvest with everyone and they appreciate the work that I've done so if you ask me what my garden grows the answer's easy cause everybody knows it, it grows love it grows love it grows love the earth was fertile the plants were growing taller as they responded to my care just like tomatoes sprouting in the hollow there are more than I could share I have a basket that seems to have no bottom and I fill it to the very brim give it to the neighbors who are really glad they got them then I fill that basket up again oh cuz I tend my trim the flowers I pull the weeds I share my harvest with everyone and they appreciate the work that I've done so if you ask me what my garden grows the answer's easy cause everybody knows it grows love it grows love it grows love what does it grow it grows love, it grows love, it grows love. One more time, it grows what? Love, it grows love, it grows love. Thank you, Michael. That I, that I take it was a uh, original, right? Yes, it is. I, I bet you had a lot of fun writing the line holler. <laughs> yeah, I did have a lot of lot fun writing the line holler, and I also have to mention that when uh, the opening lines was, "I tend my gardens, I plant the seeds, I trim the flowers," and Valerie goes, "No, you don't." That's right. <laughs> That's right. We well, you know who does the planting in your family. <laughs> well, that was wonderful. Thank you. And now I'm going to put the spotlight on our guest speaker, who I am so delighted to. Um, introduced to you again. Uh, for those of you who have been attending our services for a while, you know that Lucian is a powerful speaker. He always is a favorite of ours, and we're just delighted that he's joining us today. So with no further ado, Lucian Baker. Ah, thank you, Reverend. Thank you. I'm a little salty at Michael right now because I want to hear that song one more time. <laughs> Goodness gracious. That was that was a banger right there. I'm in a great mood. U and I T Y. U and I T Y back at Unity. It is so good to be back home. Springtime. A lot of things blooming in all of our lives right now. 
When I think of the spring, I think about how when dad bought his first house in Pittsburgh, California, before everybody started moving up there, this is back when it was still Cowtown, and dad kept telling me, you watch, son, in about 20, 30 years, everyone's going to be moving up here. And it's like, well, yeah, dad, I won't be here in 20, 30 years because I don't want to live in Pittsburgh. But um, he would have me do yard work. And we would tend to our garden. And most importantly, we would make sure we would weed out all the things we did not want in the lawn and the garden. And for all of you who are very familiar with the Bay Area, we know that Pittsburgh in the spring and in the summer is very hot. And I would always complain about the heat and I'd be sweating. And you know, when you have woke black parents, their favorite thing to do is guilt you by saying something like, yeah, well, your ancestors did, that, did this for free. <laughs> Oh, I love my father for that. And so I look at the gardens that we have in our life. And because I'm at Unity, I'm spoiled right now because I know that all of us are intelligent enough to know that this theme about a garden is just a metaphor for our own consciousness. See, the garden represents our consciousness. And the soil is the universe where we are always planting seeds, even if we are not aware of it. Michael already said it earlier where he said, your thought becomes a prayer. See, everything is a seed. Every thought, every emotion, every belief, every action, every non-action, everything is a seed and we are always planting it. And the soil, the universe is always saying yes. Now, when I first really began to grasp the concept of new thought, and I realized that the universe always says yes to whatever it is that we are speaking, I felt empowered. Okay, let me back up. I felt outright arrogant. Oh my goodness. That means that I control my life and that anything I say or do, the universe is going to say yes to. <laughs> That is true. Also my insecurities, also the things that I may not want to be there. See, this is where we get to realize that when we look at this rainforest around us, we are also responsible for the weeds that are in that garden. So just like when I say I am amazing, I am capable, I am able and the universe is saying yes. The universe also says yes to the things that I tell myself like, oh, well, I'm just not good enough. And oh, I'm not qualified. And I don't have enough money to when the universe is saying yes. Everything is a seed. Let us not forget that the rainforest rain began rain. with just one seed. There's that echo again, uh oh. My, my, how I love and appreciate abundant, uh, redundant themes. See, spiritual seeds, see. We know that through spirituality, everything is a seed. And even the not so faithful can agree that every seed is spiritual. Now that we are aware that the universe is the soil in which we plant these seeds and it always says yes, we can now live intentionally and look at what we do to manifest. See, this is why we meditate. This is why we affirm intentionally. This is why we have these practices. Faith is a muscle. And just like every muscle, we must strengthen and train it. I have to remember this when I'm faced with challenging situations in my life. Only up until now, I'll be 40 this week, by the way, <laughs> up to now, I am now realizing that these challenging situations that I've been in all through my life were actually opportunities to strengthen my faith. Helps me to think back in the times where I was very obsessed with bodybuilding. 
And I'll be honest, I mean, I mean I'm only 5'8". If I can't grow this way, at least we'll grow this way, right? <laughs> and I noticed in bodybuilding that I had these goals of lifting the, the heaviest weights in the gym. But we must train ourselves to get to that level. And so when I'm watching these guys just walk around, just buff and huge and just these beautiful specimens of, of discipline walking around, I realized that that hurt I would feel when I was trying to lift that heavy weight, that was my body expanding my capacity to carry such weight and to lift it. See, this is the reason we are chosen to go through certain things so that our faith can be strong enough and our capacity can expand. We are abundant people because we are created from an abundant God. So those blessings that we are asking for, the answer is yes, but we must in increase our capacity in order to carry those blessings. So now I get to remember that when I'm going through something tough, when I'm going through a challenging time, I get to remember that I asked for this regardless of if I decided, no, I did not or not. No, you asked for it. Everyone on this call right now has asked to be great. First of all, you already are. But of course, we want more examples of our greatness. So therefore, we get to increase our capacity. We get to have our faith tested so that we can strengthen it. Of course, it doesn't always feel good. Growth is painful. Growth is outright just uncomfortable, not just spiritually. We can talk about uh, uh, physically. When we are growing, we have what's called growing pains. You ever see a tall person going through a growth spurt? They fall out and hold their knees because they are in pain so much. Let's think about the times in our lives where we fell out in pain, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and how gracefully we got through it. And look at how beautiful you are today. The universe is always saying yes, and you are the gardener. You are the one tending to and weeding out your consciousness right now as we speak. As we talk about faith as a muscle, we get to then look at what we see in our lives. Oftentimes, we see what we don't want to see because we have more faith in what we don't want than what we do. I will say that one more time. Oftentimes we see what we don't want to see in our lives because we have more faith in what we don't want to see than what we do. I remember going to the school dance as a kid and it would always be that one girl who I wanted to dance with. And I would always be telling myself, oh, she would never dance with me. I mean, you know, she's the most popular girl in the school and I'm not cool and I'm not wearing Air Jordans and why would she talk to me? And I would walk up to her with a, you're going to tell me no consciousness. She saw the no before I even walked over there. I canceled myself out of it. And then I asked myself, oh, wow, she turned me down. How come she told me no? Because I told myself no. And I had more faith in her telling me no than her telling me yes. We all want love. We do. We all want love. We came here from love. The universe is pure love, which is why the answer is always yes. So that love that we seek has to begin with ourselves. That peace that we wish to see in the world has to begin with us. I was very humbled that Reverend Maggie invited me again. She continuously invites me and this place is my home. But I wanna talk about the first time that she and I met. She and I met through a mutual friend who was serving at Unity San Francisco at the time. And I was going through a, a transition in my church home at the time. She does not know this. Mm -hmm. And I prayed, I prayed for, for the universe to open up 
new opportunities for me to meet more centers and that I was compatible with. And out of nowhere, this amazing woman opened up her church home to me. And since then, she has been more than generous in sharing this beautiful community that we all love. But I had to be ready for that yes. I had to be ready to receive this blessing that she was bestowing on me. I had to go through that transition at my church home and have my faith tested before I can accept this beautiful gift that she has given me. See, this is where we get to look back at all the times when we felt, oh, I don't know if I can do it. And oh, why me? Why does it have to be me to go through this? And oh, why do such terrible things happen? This is where we get to look back and realize that the hard part is the prerequisite to the blessing itself. <laughs> You're going through something painful because a blessing is right around the corner. My grandmother was mentioned. As always, it doesn't bother me. Anytime I mention, my grandmother will be mentioned. <laughs> I love being in her shadow. I truly do. Let me tell you something about Reverend E. Whenever I'm going through something hard and I call her and I tell her about it, no matter how pitiful and helpless I try to make myself seem, she laughs at me. I'll cry harder, she'll laugh harder. <laughs> and the grandmother how could you laugh this isn't funny and oh my god it's so terrible all she does is laugh and then I take a second to think and I realize that she's laughing because she knows I'm going to be okay she's laughing because she's happy for me she's laughing because boy you just don't know you are going through this and what is around the corner is going to be beautiful the answer is already yes Think about the times when we thought it was the end of the world for us. Not only did it end up being okay, we ended up being more beautiful and more stronger than we could have imagined. This is what this is for. We must test our faith in order to accept the blessing. We are constantly planting these seeds, whether we are aware of it or not. These seeds are constantly being planted and the universe is constantly saying yes. God wants us to be happy. And we are controlling our experience with our consciousness right now in this moment. The universe is boundless. The universe has no end, no matter which direction you look, diagonal, parallel, front, back. I went, I went to public school, excuse me. <laughs> the universe knows no end. That means that right where you are, you are the center of your universe and all is revolving around you and wishes your command. What are you planting in your garden? What do you wish to see manifest? What plants do you wish to see sprout high in your life? Do you want plants at all? What are you planting? I have to remember all of this, when I'm going through something challenging in my life, when I hit what I feel is a pit stop or a dead end and I, I feel like I'm not making any progress and I just want it to be over, I have to remember that, hold up, you asked for this, whether you accept that or not. And so when I catch myself walking around and feeling sad and trying to be as pitiful as possible, I have to remind myself of the friends I have some doing time, some who may not ever get out. Yet every picture they send me, they're smiling and they're in a good mood. Happiness is a decision. We don't need to do anything but decide right where we are that God is good and that we are going to be happy, period. Nothing outside of you can match the inner joy that you came here with. Nothing. I remember in college, we had um, the president of our school. This woman had like two PhDs and like 
four or five different Benzes and she was always draped in Armani and Versace and oh, she smelled like just a million dollars because she had this million dollar perfume and oh, this woman was just decadent beyond you can my imagine. But she was never really in a good mood. She never really smiled a lot. No matter when you, what you, when you gave her a compliment, she just, it didn't really seem to do anything for her. The most amazing thing I would see. And then we had our janitor. And when I say our janitor, he cleaned every single building of that school. It was a small school, so we only needed one janitor, but these were a lot of buildings he was responsible of. And we already know that uh, college kids are messy, but a college boy's dorm, that's what you're cleaning? God bless you. And he would do it and he would make jokes with us. He would always stop and talk to us. He was always full of knowledge. If you were in a bad mood, he would put his broom or mop down and make sure to tell you a joke and make sure you were in a better mood. This man was happy no matter what was going on during the day. He always had something positive to say. Now, how is it that these are two people working at the same place? One is in this most prestige position and living this abundant life, yet I have never seen a smile on this person's face. This man is clean. This man has to smell our dirty socks every morning and he's in the greatest mood out of anyone. This was the example that blew my mind. This man would always stop what he was doing to make sure that those around him were in a positive mood. This is that abundance, this is that love, this is that seeding and, and planting the seeds we wish to see in our garden. He wasn't happy unless all the plants around him were vibrant with color and happiness. Happiness is a decision. See, oftentimes we get caught up in looking at other people's lives and measuring our lives and our happiness and our success against another's. We, we can admit it, we all do it. Let's not pretend like we don't, we all do it. And so when a lot of people hear this, I take dominion in my life and the universe only says yes and I am the one controlling my life, then there's that resentment. Well, well, I don't believe that is because if that was the truth, then, then how come this person over here who I know I'm more qualified than and who I know I'm smarter than has all this going on in their life and we don't know what that other person has going in their life. We never know. Like we say in hip hop, stay in your lane. Are we gonna try to live someone else's life or we get to appreciate this abundant experience that we have been blessed with? Stay in your lane. We can only see what people want us to see. That's the thing about social media. I see so many people going on trips. I see all the trips people take on social media. A lot of them owe me money. I don't get mad. <laughs> Enjoy your trip, it's fine. I want you to have fun. But let's remember that we never, we only see what people want us to see. I remember that when I see a tough guy walking around. See, I wasn't a very tough kid growing up. And so much I wanted to to be a tough person. I wanted to be perceived as tough. And I would try to do it. And I mean, you know, come on, dude, we, we know you're not tough. We, you read comic books all day, nothing's tough about you. But I would try so hard. And as I grew, I got really good at pretending. There's some who, who know the truth, but you know, they'll keep the secret for me. But what I really realized that whole time of me wanting to be tough was I was just a scared kid. I wanted to seem tough because I was afraid. So now when I see somebody quick to be violent, now when I see somebody lead with that, that theme of intimidation and fear in their life, I know what's really going on. You're afraid. You need a hug. We come here in love. Have you ever looked at a newborn? A, a baby only knows love. A baby doesn't know, oh, well, you're, you're this color, so I don't want to love you, and you're this gender, so I want... A baby loves each and everything that comes in its path. It isn't until someone 
starts teaching it new things that we develop a fear of other people. We come here to love. Fear is an easy way out. Fear, it, the, fear is a coward's game. One of my favorite MCs ever from the legendary hieroglyphics crew straight out of Oakland by the name of Casual. He dropped a line in a song where he said, I'm dangerous like stepping on a gangster's shoes. But then he summed that line up and said, a real boss would be like, man, I got plenty of those. See, nothing's more gangster than love. We got it confused. We think that this theme of fear and this theme of making everyone afraid of us and this theme of violence is, is oh, that's what tough guys do. No, if you're truly as bad as you say you are, then no one is a threat and you get to love everybody. See, you want me to be afraid because truly you are afraid. But fear puts us in our own jail. Fear keeps us caged up. What are we planting? What do we want to see manifest in our gardens? What do we need to weed out that no longer serves us anymore? We don't have to wait to enjoy our lives. We can decide right now where we are sitting that we can enjoy this experience that we've been blessed with. Let's remember that miracles are a regular thing. You are a miracle. There are billions and billions of miracles going on right in your very seat right now. You're just so used to it because you are just that magical. You are a miracle. Miracles are a regular thing. What are you planting? What do you wish to see manifest in your life? I remember a party I went to. This is high school in my senior year, 1999. And if you went to a house party in the 90s, you, 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 you see everybody walk up, but the music hasn't really started yet. You know, um, I was one of those kids who got to the party early. <laughs> and everyone's there and we all have our guard up. You know, not everybody wants to act friendly just right away. And, you know, we, we all got to just kind of size each other up and feel the energy. And that's what was going on. And there was this one kid who went to our school who we all called different because he was. He, he, he socialized differently. He dressed very differently. And, you know, let's just be honest. He also was in a different class than the rest of us. But we liked him. And that's why he was invited to the party. And so he gets there around the same time the DJ gets there. So the DJ setting up. And he's playing music while he's setting up, which is the cue that, all right, you know, fellas, let's go to the bathroom and make sure our hairline is straight. <laughs> and so we're in the bathroom grooming ourselves because we want to get ready to party. And so I'm looking at myself and I'm brushing my hair and I'm, I'm making sure my FUBU shirt is looking all fly. And he comes in. Everyone's kind of leaving as he comes in. And he yells to the top of his lungs. He makes the affirmation. Yeah. Everybody's laughing at me right now but let's see what happens when the music starts. Of course, I kind of laugh and, you know, okay, you know, whatever. Like I said, this kid was our friend, but like, yeah, whatever, dude, excuse me. So I leave. I don't know what that young man did in that bathroom, but he was absolutely right. He was absolutely right. Oh, it was beautiful the way he just brought life to this party, we all wanna feel freedom. We all wanna feel what it feels like to put our egos down and spread our wings and allow ourselves to fly. He did that. If he was not there, that party would not have been as cracking as it was. We weren't no longer dancing and trying to impress each other for our egos. He took us to church. All of us were hugging. All of us were enjoying the party as if we were just there to enjoy the love that we came with. That's what he did but no one else could have taken us there but him. He came there with no ego. He was used to being an outsider. You guys, way. he was free. And we all wanna have the courage to be free just like he did, but we needed that example. And he brought it that day. He brought it and it was beautiful. 
He planted the seed of love way before we even showed up. He showed up as the seed of love. God bless whoever invited him because we are still talking about that party till this day. The music sounded different. Everyone's clothes didn't matter. None of that mattered. Nobody cared what team you were on. We were there to party and enjoy each other. And he did that. What is it that you're planting? Let's ask ourselves right now, what is it that I wish to see manifest in my life? What can I plant right now in this moment? I ask myself that when I say I wanna see an abundant, uh, an abundant manifestation in my bank account and my finances and all these things. I have to remember that. So that means I have to also watch my words. I don't get to say, I can't afford that anymore. I don't get to say I don't have enough money for that or I don't have, I don't get to say that anymore. What I can say is I'm watching my finances <laughs> because I am, we all should be. <laughs> Rich people watch their finances, so why shouldn't I? To live an abundant life, it is truly a choice. If I wish to see abundance in my life, all I need to do is think abundantly and the rest will follow. We know what we know about. We know a lot about what we know about. What is it we wish to see in our lives that we don't know enough about? It's just that simple. I'm realizing now that life really isn't as complicated as I thought it was. I think that because we are so amazing and we are God beings that we kind of feel cheated and there's a part of us that wants it to be just a little difficult <laughs> because then we can feel like we, we achieved it. But the truth is we know what we need to do. It really is that simple. Let's strip away the ego because God mode is our default mode anyway. You are already perfect. Now, for those of us who live from the ego, what you're doing is still amazing. It is, just like we said where I'm from, it's tight. What you doing is tight. But I invite you to strip away the ego and realize that what you're doing is tight, but it is not yet God tight and nothing is tighter than God tight. See, there's a difference between rapping for your friends and rapping as if your favorite rapper is in the room listening to you. There's a difference. See, there's a difference when you think you're rapping to impress somebody and rapping when you truly just allow God to use you as a vessel and you are not there anymore and the words are moving through you. See, now you're doing something different. We're not rapping anymore. Now we are allowing spirit to invoke emotion in all of us. Not all of us can sing like Michael. Not all of us can. Not all of us can sing like Michael, but what we can do is sing with the same passion and the same love in our heart as this man does when he blesses the mic for us. We can do that. We can sing like nobody's listening and not care who's laughing at us. That's freedom. We can dance like nobody's watching and allow people to laugh. But one thing I'm realizing when we laugh, what we're really doing is we are jealous that we don't have the courage to live with the same freedom. I have to remember this when I'm seeing my son play. And, and scream and holler and I can't join in because I have to be an adult. And I wanna tell him to sit down. No, 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 old man. You're just jealous because that kid is free and you're too afraid to enjoy the same freedom. Unity, thank you so much for inviting me back home. I am truly humbled <laughs> and I love you all. I am forever a member of this village. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lucian. Awesome. So awesome. And, you know, we talked about, we talked about callings last week. I'm going to speak about callings again next week. And I think that Lucian is such a beautiful example of someone who is follow, following his calling. You can see what a gift he has and all the seeds that he has planted that have and are 
coming to fruition. So I just want to thank you so much for blessing us with your presence here today. Uh, we will all look forward to the next time you come back home. And uh, just thank you for such a beautiful, beautiful lesson. And I was thinking as you were speaking, it really is such perfect timing because um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, we gave our last in-person service a year ago. And throughout this time, we really have been tilling our soil, haven't we? We've, we've been going through something that none of us have ever gone through before. And I think now with the return of spring, with the return of hope as people are getting uh, vaccinated and we're seeing good progress, um, it is time to start planting those spiritual seeds about um, what it is that we, that we wish to have in our garden. So thank you so much for that beautiful reminder. And uh, I see a lot of love coming your way through the chat. You can also use your reaction button if you want to show Lucian how much uh, you have appreciated his, his lesson today. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> so now we get to affirm who we are. This is our garden. This is our collective garden. At Unity Spiritual Center, we are an ocean of love. I'm gonna put our, um, take the spotlight off me so I can see people. Let's do that again for Lucian so he can, so he can see how we like to get our body in it. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we are an ocean of love. <laughs> Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, and compelling values by which we strive to live, and I invite you to join with me in saying them aloud. Our vision is centered in God. We co-create a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. And our mission is we are a creative, joy-filled, spiritual community dedicated to healing, inspiring, and transforming the lives of all people through prayer, education, and love. And our values are we are spirit-led, generous with resources, inclusive, joyously creative, and guided by integrity and feeling inspired by our vision, mission, and values, feeling so enriched by what we've experienced here today and what we will continue to experience as we gather for our hospitality hour after our service. Let us take time now to be a channel for enrichment through our generous ties and love offerings. As Michael shares another beautiful song, uh, please take that time to write out a check or to go online. Jerry just posted the direct link uh, where you can donate online. Uh, and thank you for remembering that our expenses continue as we have looked for ways to stay connected uh, during this time of sheltering in place. So let's take this time to bless our ties and our love offerings, either literally or figuratively holding them to our hearts <clears throat> as we say our offertory prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless the seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Pulling weeds and picking stones Man is made of dreams and bones 
feel the need to grow my own Cause the time is close at hand Rain for grain, rain and sun Find my way in nature's chain To my body and my brain To the music from the land Plant your rows straight and long Temper them with prayer and song Mother Earth will make you strong If you give her love and care Old Croatian hungrily From his perch in yonder tree In my garden I'm as free As that feathered thief up there Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless these seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Thank you, Michael, for another beautiful song. And please join with me in blessing the offering. Um, it's a beautiful one we say every Sunday. Spirit of the living God, bless the acts of our hands, our minds, our hearts. May everything offered here at Unity Spiritual Center be a reflection of all that is good within us. Grant us the courage to patiently listen for the stirring of your presence. Enliven our spirits with humor. Fill us with reverence for one another and gratitude for our diversity. May unity, beauty, and truth be the fruit of all we do. And so it is. Amen. So not too many um, announcements, <clears throat> but of course, uh, please do stay and join us for our hospitality hour if you would like to. There's nothing you need to do except to stay on the same link. We will uh, take a three minute break in between the service and our uh, gathering, but um, so you can grab a cup of coffee or whatever you'd like to do. But uh, other than that, just stay put and we'll get to um, share a little more intimately with each other. As always, I am doing and Jerry is doing the uh, daily word reading and guided meditation every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at noon. Uh, you're always welcome to join us. Um, we have an increasingly uh, bigger uh, group, which is really lovely. And of course, that's international because Karen joins us when she can. And it's just a nice way to, um, you know, uh, get together for a still point in your day. Only takes about 15 minutes or so. And you don't have to come every time. But when you're able to, we would love to see you. Uh, as always, I want to give thanks to Reverend Brock for serving as our on-call prayer chaplain during this time. His hours are posted in our newsletter and also on our website. So if you would like to make a, uh, an appointment to pray with Reverend Brock, uh, please take a look at that. Also, we are in discussion about creating a class for you, for people who would like to know a little bit more about praying affirmatively and how you can support each other um, in prayer. We will be offering something sometime this spring, so keep your ears out for that. Also want to remind you, if you can believe it, that Easter is, what is it, three weeks away? Um, so as always, we want to continue with our 
traditions. We, we've had a longstanding tradition of showing up in Easter bonnets. So I'm giving you enough time right now to uh, gather your Easter bonnets. Men, this can include you if you want to, or um, just look for that special tie. Uh, we were wondering if maybe our dear um, and beloved Juanita might give us some tips on how to decorate a hat. So um, we'll see if we can arrange something there for um, uh, making our, our adornment as creative and fun as it can possibly be. And I think with that, we are ready to bless our kids. I see Alonzo and Santiago. I'm going to put them on spotlight. There they are. Please join with me in blessing our children and youth. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the presence of God in you, empowering you to do great things. So it is. Thank you, God. I want to thank everybody who has um, uh, helped with the service today. Uh, and, and a special shout out to to uh, Brock, who you may not realize is now running the slides. Um, and we sure appreciate your uh, taking this on, Brock, and your, and your beautiful presentation. It's, it's wonderful to see you've gotten up to speed so quickly and we're just so blessed by you doing this. And of course, thanks to uh, Reverend Jerry and to Michael um, and to all of you for being here. So let us sing our peace song. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as creator family all are we let me walk with my family in perfect harmony let peace begin with me let this be the moment now with every step I take, let this be my joyous vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. As we go forward into this day and into our week, let us remember that we are always dwelling in a universe of love that is always saying yes to us. So let us carefully look through those seeds. Let's begin planting that which we want to see bloom in the world, knowing that the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Thank you, God. Wonderful to have you all here. As I said, we're going to take a three minute break, but we hope you'll join us um, for our hospitality hour and we'll see you soon.